On today's episode of Hope Heroes, we have a foster kid named Keon, we have a motorcycle accident survivor, and a spontaneous wedding that took place on a Sunday morning marriage class. But our first guest, Dennis Herzog. After a nearly fatal motorcycle accident, the doctors told him he would never walk again. But Dennis refused to accept that limitation and instead defied all odds. Oh, the story. Um... Well, it was just like any other morning. Uh, I rode a motorcycle uh, down to, uh, that was back when I was driving all the way down to Mesa and for a job. And I got up that morning. They still hadn't finished. This was in 2001. So they still hadn't finished the 101 coming all the way around yet. And the best way was just to drive straight down uh, Cactus and get on the 101 and get down to Mesa. And it was a nice morning that morning. And like most motorcycle guys, you know, I had a helmet, but it was nice and had been hot the week before. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna ride down to the 101 without the helmet. And I'll put my helmet on when I get on the highway and everything will be good. All was wonderful until I got to uh, 56th Street. As I was nearing 56th Street, uh, a lady, uh, pulled and turned left right in front of me and actually hit my motorcycle. And I was riding along and looked down and saw the bumper and went flying up over the top of the, uh, over my handlebars, flew about 76 feet. And when I actually landed, um, as I was coming up out of my seat, the thought came through my mind, this is not gonna be good. Later, uh, you know, the police officers showed up. They blocked the entire thing off. Uh, when the cops uh, arrived, they originally thought they were coming to see a dead body because so many motorcycle accidents end that way, tragically. Uh, in fact, there were two other guys that rode motorcycles here at the church that had passed away in the last month uh, before, prior to my accident. And it was just uh, really bad for motorcyclists. And um, there was a witness uh, that saw the accident. Uh, she was actually at 56th Street. And uh, according to the police report, this is really interesting, um, the police report says she got out. And when she crossed the road, it said two men appeared on the scene. Uh, one put their foot uh, underneath my head to stop some bleeding. I got a little scar back here. And uh, the other one was on the phone calling the police. And when the police arrived, uh, they went to make, uh, uh, get reports from all the witnesses and the two men were nowhere to be found. And I don't know about you, but that lines up with my belief of guardian angels and angels watching over me. It's really cool. Uh, but to, for that to actually be in the police report was, was pretty neat to read later. Oh, recovery. Oh, that was months. Uh, my initially, I was in the hospital. I was in intensive care for uh, about three days and then uh, recovered in the hospital for about two weeks after that. Uh, when I got out, I uh, was in a wheelchair almost all summer long. Uh, about, uh, in fact, I directed, I directed Celebrate America outside uh, from the wheelchair. Um, and then uh, in the fall, I started to walk again, used a walker for about two weeks, and then transferred over to a cane. And I used the cane probably almost three years. Well, not only that, but I was also, um, you know, by being injured and being out that long, I couldn't work for a long period of time. And I just can't imagine how anybody can survive without a church family coming around them, giving them support, uh, and helping them through. It, it was uh, my entire family, you know, wife and kids and everybody uh, got support. Since then, I've uh, come on staff in 2005. I've uh, been working in the video department ever since, uh, and it's just been wonderful. Well, I have with me today Dennis Herzog. He's an author, he's an overcomer, and he's also one of our own, one of our assistant media directors. Thanks for being here today, Dennis. Thanks for having me. Well, I just loved hearing your story, especially because I've known you forever. <laughs> And it was my first yeah. time hearing it. How crazy is that? We can know people and not know their stories. That is funny. It is funny. So when I heard your story, I was shocked because the doctors told you you would never walk again. 
and I see you today. You're walking, you're running <laughs> around here, you've yeah. done marathons. I mean, what was going through your head when the doctor told you you will never walk again? It's something that, that when you hear that, you think about your entire life. And I've walked my entire life, so not being able to walk again, suddenly that taken away. And I was like, that's, that's not, that's not going to happen. And I just felt within myself, you know, the doctor's wrong. You know, forget that. And, and I, I'm going to walk again. So instantaneously, you felt that, like, rebuking of no, that's not true? Absolutely. Just deep down inside of me, it was, no, this is what I've always done. How, how can, that, that can't be true. And, and some may call that denial. I call it faith. I think it's incredible because society today tells us whatever the doctors say is what's going to happen. And how incredible that you were able to take that and say, no, I can do anything through Christ who gives me strength. And you absolutely did that. Yeah, for sure. And so how was your faith tested through this season? Oh, well, it's very difficult. You hear news like that. And then I also had a young family. Uh, my oldest at that time was only nine years old. Uh, and all that pressure on Gwen and we're trying to live. Uh, I was just a volunteer, so I wasn't working uh, through, throughout the entire time that I was, you know, in therapy, uh, throughout that entire summer, it was, it was crazy. And, you know, but I knew that we were going to make it. And what was really neat was the church family came around us and really helped us and gave us, uh, uh, the support that we needed to make it through that very, very difficult time. Yeah. I don't know how people go through difficult times like that without a church family. It's impossible. It, it, I don't think it can be done. It, I mean, I hear, hear about people and they just fall apart without having somebody on a sport team surround them. Yes, the church is so essential for so many different reasons. But what would you say to people who are looking for a supernatural healing in their lives? I would say God wants the best for us. Uh, Jesus said that, you know, uh, he gives us life and gives it more abundantly. And that's what I'm out for. That's what I'm looking for is that abundant life. And when I hear a bad report or, or things happen, you know, God's greater than that. I, I serve a mighty God that's, that can turn all things for my good. And ultimately, that's what I look for. And life more abundantly, you have lived. You went and ran a marathon. Tell us about that. Yeah, it was one of the exciting things uh, that I started doing. Um, I started with a 5K and worked my way up uh, ultimately to a marathon and then to a uh, ultra marathon, which is anything longer than 26.2 miles. I actually ran 62 miles uh, overnight in, 22, in about 22 hours. And that was just fabulous. Uh, really very difficult, very hard, but I accomplished it. And it was, it was a great feeling to uh, have that accomplished. Well, you are an overcomer and you are a fighter. Thank you for sharing your story with us, Dennis. You bet. Well, you heard it yourself. Maybe you're going through a life-threatening situation. Maybe a doctor has given you a bad report. You need a church family. That is the missing piece. We want to welcome you here at Dream City. We want to love you through the season that you're going through. You heard it from Dennis. It's essential to have a church family when life storms start to come your way. So go to dreamcitychurch.us to find out how you can get involved.